Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is the first part in a series of videos where I'll be showing you how to 3D model and render a Coca-Cola bottle in Autodesk Fusion 360. Before we start, don't forget to like the video, comment and subscribe to the channel. And without further ado, let's get started. So we'll start with a blank uh, Fusion 360 document. And the first thing we're going to do is sketch up the profile of the bottle. And once we've finished that profile, we'll use that to create the initial shape of the bottle using the revolve tool. So I'll sketch up that profile now and fast forward to when I've finished. So this is our finished profile now which is fully constrained and dimensioned and we'll now use this to revolve the first part of our model. Uh, and one thing to note is just these little construction lines that I've put on here, so one at the bottom here and this one up in the, the top of the shoulder bit there. Um, these are going to be reference points that we use later on when defining the start and the end of the fluted section uh, of the Coca-Cola bottles. Uh, and you'll notice the design of the Coca-Cola bottle is made up of 10 segments which pattern around the bottle. And this is how we're going to construct our 3D model. So if we uh, go to our Revolve tool, and then select the profile that you've just created. Uh, and instead of doing the full 360, what we're going to do is revolve this on an 18 degree angle. Uh, because what we're going to do is mirror this later on which would equal 36 degrees and pattern that 10 times around our model equal in the full 360. So make sure the operation is set to new body um, and then click OK to create that. Next we'll look at creating the fluted profile of each segment. Um, the fluted segment is present for the majority of the bottle but fades out towards the top and the bottom. We'll create this by removing material using the extrude tool and lofting the fluted profile back into the model. So we'll create a, a quick sketch on uh, this plane here. And if we turn on our bottle profile sketch, go to P to project uh, through geometry. And what we'll do is project through these reference points for the start and end of the fluted section. And click OK. Make those construction lines and then all we need to do is just put a two point rectangle in there and constrain the top and bottom of that rectangle to these lines and then all you need to do is finish the sketch to loft back in the fluted profile we'll need uh, another rail for the loft to follow and to create this rail we'll first need to create a plane to sketch on it so we can easily do this by just selecting this back face here going to offset plane select that face and just leave that as zero and click OK and if we start a new sketch on this plane then if you hit P to bring up your project tool uh, and what we're going to do is first if we just select 
turn that sketch off first. We'll just project through. these uh, reference points that we spoke of earlier uh, and then we will project through the edges of the profile here and then click OK and you also want to make sure that you select all those lines and make sure they are set to construction. Next if we go to the offset tool um, so we'll select the offset tool, select the profile of the bottle that we just projected through and offset, offset that minus 0.75 um, and the reason we've projected through these reference points at the top and bottom here is because you'll notice on the Coca-Cola bottle the, the fluted section gradually fades out back to the original bottle profile. Um, and to do this, we're going to need to put some blend radii in there so the new loft profile blends nicely back into the original bottle profile. So to do this, all we need to do is just sketch an arc on here. Make sure it's the end point is sitting on this original bottle profile. Make sure it's tangent to the original bottle profile and that the end point is also sitting at the same point as this reference point. So we'll put a 10mm radius on there. And again at the bottom here we'll do the same thing sketch an arc on that original profile make it tangent and make sure it's sat on this reference line there and also give that a 10 millimeter dimension now to ensure a smooth uh, transition back in to the original profile we'll just use the fillet tool and select these two arcs and put a figure of 10 in there to make sure that blends back in. Again at the top do the same thing. Ten millimeters. That's fine. And you'll notice that when we've done that, the original offset distance dimension has uh, removed itself so all we need to do is just reapply that dimension you'll see that's all locked down with dimensions and fully constrained um, and then we can finish that sketch one additional thing we need to do um, if we just need to go back into that previous sketch for a quick second you'll also notice that we've got a, uh, a central line on the center of this radius here and we'll project that through because what we're going to need to do and we'll re-loft the profile back in for the fluted section we're going to need a sketch profile to help define the cross-sectional uh, shape of the fluted section so if we just project this line through there make that construction And if we just re sketch in another line, make sure that sits on this arc and this center line there. Make sure it's horizontal and that it sits on the same point as that line there. And again, just make that construction, finish that sketch. So you see we've got two lines here now, one that we've just drawn in and one in the original profile. Uh, and so the next step is to put in the sketch profile at this section here, what we just mentioned. So if I go to construct, offset plane, and if I select this plane here, and instead of distance, I'm gonna select two object, and we're gonna select that point there. So the plane sits perfectly on that point and click OK. Now if we start a sketch on this plane, slice the view so we can see what we're doing. If we just project through this line here and this line here, click 
Okay. And all we need to do is just put an arc between those two points and make sure the center line sits on this line here. Finish that sketch. Now we need to remove the material uh, to make way for the fluted section. So if we turn this sketch back on where we created this rectangle, go to the extrude tool, select that profile um, and just make sure that is cutting through the entire body. And once you've done that, click OK. Now we're going to re-loft that fluted section back into the body. So if we go to the loft tool and we're going to select this face to start, this profile is going to be the second profile and then it's going to finish at the top here. So those are our three profiles that were uh, loft in between. We also need to set the rails which are going to guide the loft as it travels from the one section to the next. So if we scroll down here to the rail section, I'm going to deselect chain selection and I'm going to add in my first rail which is going to be this one that we created. So if we start down here, deselect that line. Now it'll fail obviously until you've finished selecting all the bits of geometry from your rail so just bear with me until we select all these there we go you'll see that fixes itself and then we'll add another rail in which will be this original profile that we created so start from here work our way up go and then the final rail as you can see is going to need to be this center line to stop the body distorting there in the middle so if we just select that there you can see that fixes that uh, lastly what we need to do is go back up to the profiles here you'll see on the top and the bottom we've got a little extra box here where we can select a few different options now the reason for this is that these are actual faces on the model rather than sketch profiles and we can change the tangency uh, at which the, the loft meets these profiles so we'll change that from connected which will leave a sharp edge to tangent and do the same on the bottom there and then click OK and what we can do is if we just change the visual style to shaded you see that's lofted in nice and smooth at the top and also at the bottom there so that all looks pretty good change that back to shaded with edges next we'll need to create the area in which the label will be applied so if we create a sketch on this plane here make sure the original sketch profile is visible um, and then project through the geometry around the middle of the bottle. So if we go to P, just bring up our project tool, select this radius here, and click OK. So if we offset that minus 0 0.77, so it sits in a bit further than the original offset we did for our fluted section, and click OK. we close this profile by just drawing in some lines that way and then to connect that bit up there just horizontally constrain that so at the minute we've just got a sharp edge at the top and the bottom here now what we want to do is put a fillet on there so we'll select this edge on that edge and we'll put a two millimeter radius on there again at the bottom we'll do the same thing put a 
two millimeter radius on there. Um, so next, what we're going to do is define the uh, distance up of the bottom of the label panel from the bottom of the bottle. So we'll just put a dimension on there of about 80 millimeters. And then next, we just need to define the actual height of the label area. So if we change that to about 55. And again, as you'll see, the original offset distance has removed itself. So we'll just add that dimension back in. Now, if we finish that sketch, what we need to do now is just revolve this profile to cut away material from the model. So if we select that profile, that should select the right center axis as it has done. Um, and you can see that's revolving and cutting away material to create the area in which the label will sit. So if you click OK, you'll see it's created uh, a nice kind of scallop looking edge there, which is kind of due to the revolved profile cutting away from the, the fluted section that we just created. Uh, and next we will just mirror this across the center line. So if we go to the mirror tool, select bodies, select that body, the mirror plane is this face here, and click OK. You see that's one full section of the bottle. And as I mentioned earlier, all we need to do now is just pattern that around 10 times to create a full bottle. So if we go to create, circular pattern, Select that body there. The axis is going to be the center line there. Change the quantity to 10. And then click OK. If we turn the visual display to shaded, you'll see that that fluted profile of the bottle has been created very nicely. Uh, and you've got your level area there as well, which looks pretty good. Now all we'll need to do now is just combine all these bodies together so it's one solid model. So if we go to the combine tool, select the first body and then all the other bodies, click join and then click OK. And we've got one full solid body there. Now if we turn the visual style back to shaded with edges so we can see a bit better what we're doing. Now the next bit of the model we need to create is what uh, they call the stippling on the base of the bottle which is little extruding notches on the bottom of the bottle uh, so we can do this quite simply by just if we create a new plane offset from this plane here just drag that all the way down there click OK the distance doesn't really matter too much just as long as it's past the bottom end of the bottle here so if we start a new sketch on that plane there we project through this line here and also this line here. Don't forget to make those construction lines and then all we need to do is go to create and then slot and select overall slot. Do that about five millimeters long and two millimeters wide. Looks like it's lost that dimension, so we'll just add that back in. Firstly, if you constrain it centrally to this axis we create, we uh, projected through just a second ago. And then all we need to do is just drag the uh, notch down here make sure it's sitting a little bit further away from this edge because we want it to sit centrally on the arc there. And what you could do is just make sure your original profile is turned on, select through that center point, project that through, and you could offset this profile here, delete that dimension, 
and just make sure the arc sits on that point there. And then all you would have to do is just constrain that middle point onto that arc there and it should be sitting centrally on the bottom of the bottle. Now if we finish that sketch that should be ready to extrude in just a moment but before we do that we're going to need to create another sketch to cut away material from the extrude of this stipple to give it the correct profile. And you can do this pretty simply by just creating a sketch on this plane here. Make sure this original sketch profile is visible. If we just slice that view, project through these two arcs at the bottom here, click OK. Offset those about half a millimetre, making sure it's coming out of the bottom of the bottle here. Click OK and then all you need to do is just close that profile there so we can revolve it in just a moment. There we go. We don't, you can add some dimensions onto here if you want just to make sure the, the sketch is fully constrained but it doesn't matter too much. If you finish that sketch So if we extrude this slot here, just so it joins that profile there, and then click OK. Next, if we revolve this profile here, making sure it's cutting material away, instead of angle, we'll just go to full, and then click OK. Now you'll notice a mistake I've just made here. The dimensions we put on to determine the actual size of the profile that we revolve cut away didn't get rid of the full material so we can just simply turn that sketch back on, show the dimensions, and just change that to 30 millimeters, nope, maybe a bit more, 45. There we go, that's got rid of that. Turn that sketch back off. Now if we just put a fillet on this top edge here to give it a smoother profile, just make that 0.4 millimeters. Click OK. And then lastly to finish off the stipples, all we need to do is just circular pattern that singular one around the model. So if we go to pattern, circular pattern, Select features, select the fillet, the revolve and the extrude. Make sure the compute option is set to optimized. And then select your center axis there to pattern those around that. Um, the quantity, you can do whatever you want really, whatever looks good. 36 seems to look pretty good to me, so if I click OK, there we go. That's all those stipples patterned around on the bottom there. The last piece that we're going to be modelling uh, on this is going to be the metal cap that will sit on the top here. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is just define the actual depth at which the cap will sit. Um, and we'll do this by just offsetting the plane from the top here. Select that top face, just drag it down uh, to whatever you think looks good. We'll try minus 7.5, see how that looks. Click OK to create that. And then we'll use this uh, plane that we just created to split this face here. So if we go to modify, split face, we'll select that face that we're going to split and the splitting tool is going to be the plane that we just created. So once you've selected those two, click OK. You'll see that it's split that face into two now. 
Next, we're gonna to need to go to the surface tab. And if we go to create and then offset, because what we're going to do is offset these surfaces here above the line that we just split to create the actual um, cap. So if we turn off chain selection, so we can just select these top faces here. And don't forget to select that one and then click distance. We're going to put 0 0.5 in there. Operation to the new body and then click OK. Now you'll see that's created a surface body here. So we've got our original basic shape of the cap. Uh, now we need to create the crimped edge uh, that you'll see on any Coca-Cola bottle. So if we go back to solid here, create a sketch on this plane here. And if we slice our view and then go to project and if we select bodies now instead of uh, specified entities, if we just select the offset body that we just created there, click OK. And all we're going to need to do is just put a line going that way, about half a millimeter. And then all we need to do is put an arc going from that endpoint tangent to this arc here. To find that with a dimension. Four and a half, say. And then finish that sketch. So once we've done that, what we need to do next is add some thickness to the cap. So if we go to create, thicken, and then if we select uh, this surface body that we just created for the cap, the thickness, put that to 0 0.4, um, and we'll make sure that's going inside the body rather than outside. So click OK once you've done that. That creates a new solid body. You see how that's added that thickness there. Now what we can do is revolve this profile in to create the crimped edge. So if you select that profile, the center axis to uh, select the axis and then for angle we're going to change that to symmetric and put three degrees in there make sure that's set to join and then click OK we'll turn the visibility of this plane off here now all we need to do is add some fillets to these edges to create uh, a smooth continuous crimped edge so if we go to the fillet tool set these two edges first just drag that until it looks pretty good so that should work fine and then we'll add fillets to these bottom edges here as well again just drag that until it looks nice and smooth that should be fine and similarly to how we did with the stipple, all we need to do is just circular pattern that around the model. So if we keep it set to features, select the two fillets that you just added and the revolve tool. And then for the axis again, select the center axis. And we go for 32 a bit more space between them um, again compute option set to optimized and click OK and there you go so if you turn again turn the visual style to just plain shaded you see that's put like the crimped edge on there now if you're not happy with that, how that looks you can always just change the uh, the sketch that we created to to make that crimped edge so if we go back to our 
front view. Go into that sketch. Maybe change that to point seven. That looks a little bit better. There we go. So that's our finished Coca Cola model. Hopefully, you managed to follow along uh, with this video and ended up with something that looks like this. In the next video, um, we'll be looking to add some liquid into the bottle, hollow it out. Uh, and create a nice looking rendered image and go through some tips and tricks to try and make it look really nice. So thanks for watching the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!